Hi and welcome back. Coming to you from the rainy, smoky valley of Kansas, I'd like to present the game Morgan's Rifles. It's a game by Mayfair Games, 1981. Morgan's Rifles presents the most celebrated battle of the Southern Campaigns of the American War for Independence, the Battle of Calpins. General Dan Morgan led a force of hand-picked light continental regulars bolstered by sharpshooting frontier militiamen against Lord Cornwallis's detached elite flying corps commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Benestre Tarleton. Coming nine months before the British surrender at Yorktown, Calpins led directly to the collapse of British influence in the southern colonies, as the learned jurist John Marshall commented on the importance of Calpins. Seldom has a battle in which greater numbers were not engaged been so important in its consequences as that of Calpins. Now, on the bicentennial anniversary of this historical decisive engagement, Morgan's Rifles is a fast-playing company-level simulation with these components. 152 counters, a 17 by 22 full-color map, 12-page rulebook, turn chart, and one six-sided die. Morgan's Rifles is a strong playing game of moderate complexity. Today's game is Morgan's Rifles and it comes with everything you see here. Uh, the rule book, these charts I did print out, they're on the back of the rule book. Uh, game counters, game map, six-sided die, and the turn record card, which is right here. Okay, we'll just uh, uh, go with the blurb on the back of the box. Morgan's Rifles presents the most celebrated battle of the Southern Campaigns of the American War for Independence, the Battle of Calpins. American General Dan Morgan led a force of hand-picked light continental regulars bolstered by sharpshooting frontier militiamen against Lord Cornwallis's detached elite flying corps commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Bannistre Tarleton. Coming nine months before the British surrender at Yorktown, Calpins led directly to the collapse of British influence in the southern colonies. As a learned jurist, John Marshall commented on the importance of Calpins, Seldom has a battle in which greater numbers were not engaged been so important in its consequences as that of Calpins. Now on the bicentennial anniversary of this historically decisive engagement, Morgan's Rifles is a fast-playing company-level simulation with these components. 152 counters, 17 by 22 inch full-color map, 12-page rules booklet, a turn chart, and one six-sided die. Morgan's Rifles is a strong playing game of moderate complexity. Manufactured by Mayfair Games Incorporated in 1981. Okay, let's start with the rule booklet. It is 12 pages long and contains no illustrated examples of play and is printed on a matte finish paper. In it, we'll find the game components, the preparation for play, charts and tables, playing pieces of the game map, the sequence of play, movement, combat, morale, the reforming of units, reinforcements, skirmishers, the victory conditions, and some historical variants that you can add to the game. Reading the introduction real quickly, we have Morgan's Rifles is a challenging game recreating the Battle of Calpins, which took place in Southern Carolina on January 17, 1781. The two players assume the roles of the British commander, Lieutenant, Carl, Lieutenant Colonel Tarleton, and the American commander, Brigadier General Daniel Morgan. Each must maneuver his forces to inflict casualties and undermine the morale of his opponent. Uh, 
game map is a 17 by 22 inch map upon which Morgan's Rifles is played, representing the area known as Hannah's Cowpens where the battle was fought. Playing pieces, 156 die cut pieces are of two types, counters and markers. And then on the next page we have an illustration of the markers themselves. Or units and markers. <coughs> Unit counters. Okay, the first uh, units illustrated here are leaders. Same leader, front and back. Uh, we have the leader name. We have the unit that he commands. Uh, printed in the middle on the left hand side. We have the morale bonus, which is a large number here on the left hand side. And then the movement factor, which is the large number on the right hand side. On the unit counters, pretty much the same thing. We have the identification, which is uh, Continental here, Maryland. And it's got a combat strength of six and a movement allowance of two. On its back side, when it's flipped over, you have the same information except the combat strength and the movement allowance are reduced. We'll go with the sequence of play. Each turn is conducted in the following sequence. 1. Reinforcement phase. Reinforcements are placed on the map's edge. 2. The British player phase. The British player conducts the following steps as the phasing player. A. Rally. The phasing player may attempt to rally his routed troops, but only if they have a leader with them. B. Movement. The phasing player moves his troops in one of two ways. Charge. Troops moving at twice their movement factors to engage in the enemy in melee. C. Fire combat. Both sides fire the weapons at each other. Melee. All, all melees are resolved. Then we have morale. Morale check. Each player checks the morale of each unit, which have suffered enough casualties. Those which are route, those which route are moved immediately. Then we have the American phase. American player phase, which repeats everything. Step A here. Uh, on down to E, the morale phase. Uh, routed units, so oh, that's movement. And then you just uh, turn the marker over and you start the next game turn. Sorry, I'm kind of out of it. Uh, I've got a severe sinus infection and my brain's kind of muddled because of the medication I've been taking, so you'll just have to bear with me there on. In that account uh, you have regular movement and you have road movement and then you have charge movement stacking only skirmishers and leaders may stack any number of leaders yes so only leaders and only leaders and uh, skirmishers can stack uh, so basically it's one hex or one unit per hex uh, let's see, we also have a unit contigu uh, contiguity, unit counters bearing the same designation, for instance the seven fusiliers must remain adjacent to each other, if not they have to correct that by moving as close as, uh, to the main body of units as possible, that matches their designation. We then have combat. There are two basic types, fire and melee. Each non-charging, non-routed counter, which is not in a melee, may fire. Uh, further, artillery units, in addition to their small arms fire, may fire their three-pounder cannons if they have not moved that turn. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Road bonus, back over here, just to skip back a little bit. Units moving along the road gain an extra movement point <clears throat> and you can start on the road or you can move and then go to the road and you'll still get that extra bonus. 
Then we have charge, <clears throat> or you just get double their movement point allowance, and they must move into the hex to engage the enemy unit in melee during the melee phase. Uh, let's see. Combat, we have range. Cavalry have a range out to two hexes. Infantry and artillery. Move this up here a little bit. I'm creating too much havoc. Uh, cavalry has two hex range. Infantry and artillery using muskets have a five hex range. Infantry with rifles have a seven hex range. And the three pounder cannons, when using uh, when artillery is used as a cannon, has twenty hexes. Then we go through such things as line of sight, how artillery works, normal fire, melee, casualties. Then we have morale. And uh, after all combat has taken place, American and British players must check the casualties inflicted on each unit and compare the casualties to the casualty levels listed on the morale chart. We have leaders, which can affect the morale chart or the morale of units. We have the reforming of units. Any unit which is taken casualties may form up. And we have reinforcements. Basically, which units are considered to be reinforcements and where they come onto the map at. Then we have skirmishers and then the victory conditions. Like I said, the map contains no real graphic display of uh, examples of play um, and that's pretty much it the back we get the morale tables for the various units and or the next to last page and then to the last page we get the actual combat tables the melee fire combat and the artillery tables I've taken the liberty to go ahead And photocopy the morale tables and the combat results tables just so I don't have to flip back and forth in the rule book. We also get this handy dandy turn record track which uh, goes from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the morning or actually 7 40 five to eight yes eight o'clock in the morning um, there's like 40 turns to the battle some of the reinforcements or actually all the reinforcements that will be brought into the battle the units excuse me the units here oh, I can't see because of the glare can I well you have to trust me these units are going to be British uh, like Tory units or whatever they're called and these units are going to be Tarleton's Legion and then up here we have uh, regular Continentals at the top and then we have the uh, militiamen in the, uh, the other brown color the map itself is eh, fairly hideous it just has various shades of green the lighter the color is the higher the elevation so we have kind of a light green going down to a lighter green going down to a darker green and going down to the lowest elevation is the very dark green terrain has no effect on movement in combat other than other than to affect line of sight uh, the road will give you a road bonus of one extra hex and that's pretty much it I mean it's very plain there's no other terrain so if you like green this map is for you not sure how much this game costs today I think I got mine on eBay and I don't remember what I paid for it but it wasn't too much um, most Mayfair games, 
they have um, the rolls could be tightened up a little bit more usually and the components are usually barely adequate uh, to play with. These counters have a very thin white core to them, but the way they're uh, made, if I can give you one for an example, without the uh, thumb going nuts. I don't know if you can see it from here, it might be too close. Uh, you're going to have to trust me. The front and the back of the counters um, stick. Uh, when they were formed, uh, they don't. Uh, <clears throat> they weren't put together too well. Let's just put it that way. They kind of want to pull away from their uh, white core. The only other condition that, or <clears throat> complaint that I really have. Uh, if you want to call it a complaint, is yeah, what was I thinking? Oh, it's not a complaint; it's just the way they designed it. Uh, let's see. I don't know if this is a good example, but the units at full strength are printed on the back of the unit, and the reduced strength is printed on front of the unit as we would consider uh, how the um, counters are normally put together where you have your primary information on the front and your uh, reduced information on the back of a counter. So this would be the back of a counter even though it l looks like uh, front as we would punch them out. And then it has the back of the unit, which is the front of the unit, but it's the back of the counter sheet. Anyway, I know that didn't make a lot of sense, but like I said, I'm kind of befuddled due to the medicine that I've uh, taken for this horrible uh, case of sinuses. Anyway, the only other counters you really get are some markers. You get... Um, Strength point markers, some rally markers. I think you get route, yeah, you get route markers. And that's pretty much it. So overall, this is the game, the battle for Calpins. And I'm going to play it. I will probably not film it or come back and, you know give a turn by turn or anything like that so this is probably the only video you're going to get on the game uh we'll see what happens i also have mayfair's wake island i did play it and i found it lacking in several areas uh, but i will probably revisit it again someday however i have hundreds of other uh games that i need to get to someday this is just a part of my collection it's not complete by any means sometimes I just have one game of a subject sometimes I have two or three games on the subject but anyway I need to get to these sometime while I can still uh, use my hands and my eyes <laughs> So, anyway, that's uh, what we have right now, and uh, I wish you all the best of luck. Hope you have a good day, and I'll talk to you later.